In this video, I'm aiming to answer the question, what panel type should I buy? I'm going to be breaking down the, the main sort of design differences briefly, then jump into feature differences, things like response times and refresh rates, alongside things like viewing angles and viewing experience in general, and uh, even things like the, the brightness, lifespan, cost and availability, so let's go. OLED panels are slowly working their way into the sort of desktop monitor space, and for good reason. The organic light emitting diode is a rather special bit of kit. Instead of having a single uniform backlight and actively blocking the lights, OLED pixels actively, well, emit light. Each pixel is made up of red, green, blue, and often white LEDs, which are able to fully switch off, giving an infinite contrast ratio within just a couple of pixel size. There are different subpixel layouts, uh, the most infamous being Samsung's Pentile layout, although LG's uh, WBGR layout is a close second. But either way, you can get readability issues with text, at least in Windows, as Windows assumes a more standard RGB pixel layout of the, the subpixels, and if you don't have that, then it kind of looks a bit off. Still, OLEDs are one of the most impressive experiences available right now. Mini LED is less of a panel type and more a backlight option. While there are some mini LED panel based displays, they are absolutely massive due to the technical limitation of being able to shrink the individual LEDs. So consumer in consumer displays, you'll generally find mini LEDs as the backlight to a conventional LCD style layer. In that case, the number of mini LEDs is generally proportional to the quality of your, say, HDR experience, thanks to having more local dimming zones. That's where some of the LEDs will switch off to provide an infinite contrast ratio and get true black, rather than the dark grey that a standard LCD panel will generally offer. Quantum dot is an even newer term, but technically speaking, it itself isn't a panel type either, at least for now. Quantum dots are basically something that you can add to an existing panel type to greatly improve its quality, especially in the colors department. These deserve their own video on how they work, but in short, the size of the dot determines what color of light they emit, with green and red dots being the most common to find in displays. The most exciting QD type display on the horizon is the QD OLED from Samsung, promising much better brightness, colors, and lifespan, although you can buy more traditional LCD displays with quantum dots, like LG's Nano IPS lineup. And speaking of IPS, in-plane switching panels are rapidly becoming, if not already are, the standard panel type. Especially with all of the development in the last decade or so, IPS panels are now generally the best all-rounder, liquid crystal based panels. Much like all of the other LCD panels, IPS panels are still made up of a solid backlight that then shines through the IPS LCD layer, which does its best to block the correct amount of light to produce the desired colors. Black is not a strong suit here, as the pixel can't fully block all of the light the backlight is trying to force through it. By comparison, a vertical alignment or VA panel generally does a better job of blocking that light, often at the cost of smearing and slow response times, as we'll cover later on in the video. Some prefer the deeper blacks and don't mind the ghosting, in comparison to the faster transitions but more grey blacks of an IPS panel. Lastly, Twisted Pneumatic or TN panels are one of the oldest technologies, and for the majority of people have kind of fallen out of favour. Their last remaining market is in the ultra high refresh rate models, like ASUS's uh, newly announced 500Hz option coming later this year. So that's a brief explainer on each, let me run you through the feature differences, starting with response times. 
We'll start off with the fastest here, which OLED easily takes the cake here. It's capable of switching its pixels on and off in under one millisecond, making it functionally instant. They can have some rather strange behavior though, but on the whole, they are lightning fast. Mini LED on its own should be the same as OLED, although in the more conventional style is near instant for full black to any shade of white or gray, with local dimming enabled I should add, but is otherwise functionally the same as whatever panel it gets attached to, normally IPS. The same goes for Quantum Dot, where again it mostly gets used on IPS panels, and so generally sits in the same category as them. TN is generally the, the next fastest, followed, again generally speaking, by IPS, and then VA. When it comes to refresh rates, at least in the available monitors right now, TN and IPS actually pretty much tie, with 300 and 360 hertz options available using both panel types. ROG, uh, ASUS's ROG Swift 500 hertz that's on the way will swing that balance back to TN though, but still, pretty close. Even in the more mainstream range, IPS monitors can be found with upwards of 240Hz refresh rates compared to the, say, 165Hz range for VA panels. OLEDs can generally run 120Hz at the moment, although there are some that are more recent that are running at more like 165Hz as well. As for colour reproduction, this is an entirely, insanely detailed science in and of itself. But to do my best to far paraphrase an entire field of science, the main factors that you should probably be considering here are the black level and contrast, uh, color gamut coverage, and the accuracy of those colors. OLED takes an easy lead in the black level and, and contrast departments. Being able to individually switch off the pixels means that you can get true black and an infinite contrast ratio, and that contrast ratio can be a single pixel apart, allowing for the, the beautiful dark scenes with no haloing. By contrast, pun intended, any other panel tech is compromised here. Mini LED does get close, although even with Apple's 10,000 mini LED backlight in their latest MacBook Pro machines, that doesn't come close to the 8.3 million pixel 4K OLEDs. While you generally don't see much in the way of haloing on that display, especially around brighter objects on dark backgrounds, it is still there to some degree. As for traditional LCD panels, well, VA generally fares best here, with around a 4000 to 1 contrast ratio being fairly common. By comparison, TN and IPS panels will generally find themselves around a thousand to one, meaning that the darker shades are a fair bit lighter than they otherwise should be, with black still being just a kind of dark shade of grey. As for the colour gamut coverage, as a general rule, IPS panels, especially those fitted with Quantum DAWs, generally offer the best range and accuracy here. OLEDs can offer a wide range, although aren't always perfectly accurate. A VA normally doesn't do too badly with coverage, although again can struggle with accuracy. And TN, well that's at the back of the pack here, uh, generally offering the least coverage and the worst accuracy. Viewing angles are generally best on IPS panels, with little to no colour shifting or distortion from any direction. OLED panels are generally pretty good for that too, although some can have sort of off-axis colour shift. VA is normally pretty reasonable here, although not quite matching IPS most of the time, and TN, well again, that's, uh, that's the worst here, the, the worst viewing angles. More recent panels, especially TN panels, have done a good job to improve the, the viewing angles and the viewing experience, although often only the side-to-side -side viewing experience, not from above or below. Brightness is an interesting one, as generally speaking, all of the panel options here are pretty much the same when it comes to brightness, because they just have a backlight shining through their panels. Since OLEDs are, don't have backlights, they are the standout here. In general, LCD-based monitors can offer pretty much any brightness level that they want, with the majority that I test ranging from, say, 300 to 500 nits, but some can reach, uh, the, the sort of top-end models can reach 1000 nits if needed, if not more, 
mostly for or in their HDR modes. OLEDs, by contrast, can hit fairly high brightness levels too. I mean, uh, 800 nits or even 1000 nits for some of the newest ones in a small window is uh, feasible, but the brighter they run, the more power they draw, which is already a bit more than a standard sort of panel, and the hotter they get, which diminishes their lifespan. That's why models like the Aorus FO48U and the twinned LG C1 will sit at around just 130 nits of constant maximum brightness across the, the full screen. I mean, that's light years less than a comparable, say, VA panel, which could happily sit at 3, 4, 500 nits or more. Which brings us nicely onto lifespan. With OLEDs in particular, an issue they face is called burn-in. You likely have heard of it, uh, where static content, things like in-game UI elements or even desktop icons in the Windows taskbar, can be etched into the display and ever-present afterwards. While there are a number of features designed to lessen the impact of burn-in, it is a valid concern that any prospective buyers may have. One of those features is effectively actively wearing all of the pixels down evenly to remove the burned in image, with the side effect being reduced lifespan as well you're actively you know, damaging the pixels to level or even them out. With careful use, it is more than possible to keep an OLED display running happily for years, but you should know that they are a more high maintenance style and simply don't have the same sort of expected lifespan as a more conventional LCD display. Finally, we should talk about price. In general, TN panels are the cheapest to produce, although seeing as they're mostly phased out in the market, all bar the ultra budget and ultra sort of high refresh rate options, it's not likely that you're in the market for one of those displays. Plus, since 360Hz IPS displays are already in the market with products like ASUS's PG259QN, I'd personally much rather get an IPS panel instead there. IPS panels are now remarkably cheap, even sort of on price parity with VA options, while offering generally a much better experience, at least in my opinion, albeit with those worse black levels and contrast ratios. As for mini LED monitors, those are still pretty niche and only found in higher end options, so pricing on those is generally on the higher side. Quantum dots can actually be found for pretty much the same price as any other IPS display, including from LG with their Nano A IPS line, and even more budget brands like the X equals monitor I reviewed recently. QD OLED monitors are just coming to market, so expect to be paying a premium for those, at least for a little while, although the more traditional OLEDs are coming down in price too, with the LG C1 TV being uh, available for around a thousand or so pounds, or a 60Hz version available for more like 600 which for the size, the quality, and it being an OLED, definitely isn't too bad. So, which is for you? Well, I can't say for sure, I don't know what you're after, but let me give you a few thoughts. If you're after a well-rounded gaming monitor, a nice IPS panel is probably up your alley, unless the black levels are a problem for you, in which case VA might be a better shout. If you want ultra-high refresh rates, either an IPS or a TN is probably your best bet, and if you're a budding content creator, well, you'll probably want a quantum dot IPS display or even a QD OLED if your budget can stretch to that. For a TV replacement, an OLED might work well, and as more advanced tech comes out, OLEDs in one form or another may end up spilling into more sectors, or actually into every market, which I don't think is a bad thing. Because personally, I love OLEDs for gaming. Those instant response times in particular make it a fantastic experience. And there's just a, a sharpness, especially to those deep blacks that you get that make it a, a rather beautiful viewing experience. Of course, your budget will determine kind of how high end or how low end you need to be in any of those markets. And this is only a general idea, but I hope that I've given you a bit of an understanding about the different panel types. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the the comments down below. 
I'll leave a couple of links to some monitors that I've reviewed recently. Those will be Amazon affiliate links that you can take a look at and uh, maybe pick one up yourself if you fancy. And if you want to support the channel, you can just stay up to date on these videos with the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. You can also check out the YouTube join button where you get some cool rewards and uh, but you get to become a YouTube member and all that sort of stuff. Or you can support on Patreon instead if you'd rather. You can also pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one or a load of other designs I made myself. And there's some other links in the description you can check out too. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Feel free to check out some more videos on the end cards. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next video.